Hi, I'm Paul with ECI Comfort Solutions. In this video, we're going to show you what goes into performing preventative maintenance for your home's air conditioning system. Yearly preventative maintenance is important. It can prevent high energy bills, increase the lifespan of your system, and catch minor problems before they turn into expensive repairs. Now here's our service manager, Jeremy, to show you how it's all done. Hi, my name is Jeremy from ECI Comfort Solutions. Today I'm going to go through our checklist of what we do for a tune-up. I'm going to show you what tools we need to do the tune-up and also step-by-step -step process. I'm going to start with checking the air filter. Slide out the air filter, inspect it. With the tune-up we're going to replace it. Obviously make sure your airflow is facing the right way. With this Lennox unit, the return is dropped down here going into the unit, which someone has marked on the ductwork already. This one here is a cap that goes over top of the air filter. Also, you want to inspect the round duct work too, where it attaches to the unit to make sure it's caulked. Um, otherwise, you'd be replacing the air filter, but it'll still suck in dirt from them cracks. I want to go through, do a visual inspection of the duct work, um, showing these spaces here. Got space here, space here, and then up here we got a nice big leak ups up here. Gaps in the duct work will obviously blow more air conditioning down the basement, cooling this space more than it should, but also affect the second floor airflow um, and have a significant temperature difference. This customer already complained that there is a five degree difference between the first floor and second floor. Fixing something like that would make a significant difference. We are gonna go over some stack pressures. I do have a manometer so we can check the stack pressure on the return and supply. But with the stack pressure, it will give us more signs of um, if there's too much restriction in the return uh, blocked air filter, um, and when you check the stack pressure and supply, uh, it can show um, if there's blocks in the AC coil, if it's dirty or uh, full of cat hair, dog hair, whatever it may be, um, but also will show signs of excess leaks in the duct work, if you need duct sealing, um, if there's too low stack pressure, and if too high stack pressure, it will show that the duct work was improperly sized or not enough supply registers. If the cool is clogged, you're going to lose performance, a uh, higher electric bill. It can get to the point where it'll start freezing your, your, your coil and freeze the uh, refrigerant lines. At that point, could lead up to having no air conditioning on a really hot day. Also can uh, raise your amp draw on your blower, so it makes your blower struggle to, uh, to keep going. So it uh, could shorten the lifespan of the, of the fan or the blower. When we're done, the tune-up will give a customer a full checklist of what passed and failed and what our readings are. Um, obviously, I would tell them that before I take the next step of taking the stack pressure of the supply, they're going to have to have us repair something like that before we can give them an honest reading on the supply. Um, also here, I would also recommend using duct seal in each one of these cracks. Uh, there's pretty significant gaps in the supply return where they attach to the old duct work. We'll start it up and start taking some readings. Pop these off. All right, so here we already have some holes on, we have a hole in the return and a hole in the supply. There's also a hole on the back of the furnace, so we can check stack pressure on the return. We can check stack pressure before the coil, around back of the furnace, and we can check the stack pressure above the coil. Whenever you're done drilling a 3 8 hole, we have caps that we put these caps back in the hole, make sure there's no leaks after we leave. Start with the static reading on the return, with the arrow facing the airflow, or the test port facing the airflow. Here I have a reading of negative 0.4, which is not that bad, I've seen much worse. The stack pressure is so high, you actually have the problem where every time the unit comes on, this ductwork will pop in and out, and you'll have a complaint from a customer saying uh, they hear a, a thumping noise when it starts and stops. But we're gonna write down our readings from our static pressure. We'll go around back, take a static pressure reading about around back of the gas furnace. This is the static pressure before the AC coil. This reading is uh, 0.39. It's positive 0.39. Also, one thing I want to add too about taking static pressure on the return, you actually can take a static pressure reading with the filter in and with the filter out to show more of a restriction. The next reading I'm going to take is over top of the AC coil. Again, you want the arrow facing the airflow. Our reading here, positive 0.14. Now I have a reading before the AC coil and after the AC coil, I could do the math to see what my pressure drop is, to see if there's reason to investigate the coil more, to see if there is a, a dirt or um, debris, frozen coil, 
and also too it could have the airflow could be set too high on the uh, blower. We uh, took all the readings for the duct work. We did go ahead and fix the uh, pretty significant leak we had, the six inch pipe, things like that. A simple fix of just taping, taping the leak. We're, we're taking the time to put a new 90 on to fix it properly. Should greatly significantly change the temperature of his room. Now that we're done doing the static pressures, we're going to see what our temperatures are from supply and return. Start your reading. Wait for the temperature to balance out. Uh, could take up to uh, a minute. So our reading here is about 70. So we have our supply temp, our return temp, I'm sorry. And now we're going to a supply. Take your reading. All right, so now we have our reading for our supply. Now today our difference is only 15 degrees. Uh, today it's only about 45 to 50 degrees outside, which is probably why we're not getting such of a temperature split. We'll also write these readings down on the checklist. Now we're gonna move on to inspecting the condensate drain. Turn the system off. Remove your cover. The smoke pipe for this unit has already been removed. We're going to inspect the pan, make sure there's no excess dirt. We're going to take a water jug, start to fill the pan. For one, you want to make sure the, the pan's not leaking. So if you hear water rushing out of the pan as you're adding it, it's a sign that the pan's cracked or rusted through. This unit here, it's hard to get the CO2 gun around back to blow out the condensate. So what I did here was I added a hole on the first 90 with a 516 screw. This way we can remove it to clear the drain and put it back in when we're done. I just heard the condensate pump come on. So right there, we checked the condensate pump already. Take the gallow gun to a hole, pull out the drain. If you can, you're gonna wanna try and hold this side also, the hole on this side while you're blowing the drain out. So that way we make sure that all the air is being pushed through the drain. So we just heard that thing blow through, so it's got good flow. After you do blow it out with the CO2 gun, you're gonna to wanna to flush some more water through. So if it break loose any uh, debris inside the pipe, this will flush the rest of the through to the condensate pump or to the drain. If your condensate drain does clog, um, it's definitely a major problem. An air conditioner on a hot day could produce up to 10 gallons of water a day. Um, so if you have 10 gallons of water down here, for one, could damage your, your, uh, your stuff in the basement. Two, it could leak down and destroy the control on your furnace. It could leak on the blower. It could, could substantially compromise the system. The one reason we do check to see if there's any leaks inside there is if we have water leaking into the furnace, for one, sometimes you can see it coming down here, see condensation on controls and safeties, which can ruin the safeties. Also, that water can leak inside the heat exchanger, um, inside the unit. Uh, there would be rust in the heat exchanger, which would uh, be a hidden problem that the customer would not see. But if that did rush through, you'd have a CO2 leaking into your house every time the gas furnace turned on. Right, so another thing that we do is we inspect the coil. The cavity, we inspect inside the coil. We're looking inside the coil, the outside of the coil. We're checking the pan. We'll be checking the walls of the inside the uh, casing. The reason we check these things is it's very important. Uh, it's dark. It's cold. It's a perfect situation for mold to grow. Every year, if we have this done, we can keep up with it to make to keep it from becoming a major problem. If it's wiped down and cleaned once a year, uh, it's as simple as spraying and just wiping down the spots that seem um, to gather up a good amount of mold. So take a flashlight, visually inspect the outside of the coil. We're gonna look here also for the walls. As you can see, some, there is some spots here that are concerned. Uh, the pan, you can also see there's some mold in here. One thing that we do is we add pan pills to the condensate pan. For this particular unit, it's a two-ton unit, I'm gonna add two pan pills, try to spread them out. This will kill any bacteria from growing inside here. We're gonna look inside this coil, make sure there's no hair, no mold, uh, anything obstructing the airflow. We'll take a spray, which is a disinfectant also. 
With yearly maintenance, all you have to do is spray this coil. This will automatically rinse the coil, lift any dirt off the coil. If this is done yearly, this is all you're going to need to do. If you do not get your tune-up done every year, uh, what will happen is it doesn't give that <clears throat> cleaner a chance to remove the dirt from year-to-year -year use. Uh, it'll build up. We're going to have to either remove the coil to clean it, to scrape it with a, a clean coil cleaning tool, or if it's so bad, we'll probably recommend replacing the coil. Obviously, one of the main reasons why we're here doing a tune-up is to lower your energy bill. Uh, having a dirty coil is going to have a higher amperage on your fan, uh, less performance, you know, so definitely it's very important to keep up with, with keep it clean. Okay, so the next thing we're going to check is your voltage coming to the unit. We're going to check the amp draw on the fan. We're going to inspect the wiring to make sure there's no loose connections. Thermostat wire, low voltage, also the high voltage. We'll, again, we'll inspect it, make sure there's no loose connections. This all looks like it's in good shape. You're going to find your line voltage coming into the unit and see what your voltage is. This one's 124 volts, which is within spec. Also, take an amp draw reading of the fan, 0.6. You can look at the reading on the tag on the unit to see where it should be. Double check the dip switch settings. Make sure, like this is a two ton system, so we're gonna wanna go through the dip switch settings and make sure that's the proper airflow. So now we did them checks here. Now we're gonna look in here to see how clean the cavity is. We're gonna take a vacuum, clean up all this dirt. We're also gonna shut down the blower. Uh, look at, inspect the fan blades on the blower. All right, so before we put the cabinet back together for the AC coil, we're gonna check one last thing, refrigerant leak. Um, even though I don't see any oils or any evidence of a leak, I still wanna use my sniffer. Uh, for one, this prevents callbacks, um, but two, uh, these sniffers do work pretty well. If there is a small leak, it should be able to pick it up. So we're gonna go through the edges of the coil. As you can see, there's some significant rust in some of the areas. I would probably aim towards where most of the rust is. Also, TXV, a lot of times the connections for the TXV leak, and also the brace joints. Also the smoke pen test, we can come through, check all the connections back here. I noticed this one where the, I see tape here. So again, you see it bring the smoke here. It's just pushing all the smoke away. I look into this fitting more, I grab this, it just literally falls right off. Tell the customer, be aware of it. We'll put some zip screws on there, secure this, we'll mask it so it's a nice tight seal. Also, I found this damper. This damper is just flapping in the wind. This is also one that does the second floor where he's having, he has, the customer has a complaint. If this is flapping around right now, it's halfway open. Bring us to the open position, tighten it, lock it in. There we go. All right, so now we're gonna get started on going over the outdoor unit. Uh, we're gonna check charge, check voltage, capacitor, um, check amp draw on the compressor, and the blower. Uh, also, we're gonna clean the outdoor unit. The first thing we're gonna check is the voltage coming into the system. Check the disconnect for any melted wires, loose connections. Check the line voltage coming in. Document that on your paperwork. Again, inspect to make sure there's no melted wires, metal plastic, any cause to, uh, any reason to replace. All right, next thing we're gonna do is hook up our gauges. We're gonna check for superheat and subcooling. Gonna need to check temperatures of each of these pipes with the clamp on gauges. I put uh, my high side and my low side off my gauges. Write down my superheat and subcooling. Uh, before I did this, I took the indoor wet bulb temperature uh, so I can put this stuff in my gauge, it tells me my, sub, my superheat should be. Um, Subcooling, you're gonna know if it's, a, if it's TXV or a uh, piston. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do, now I've done that, is visually check for any refrigerant leaks. Also get my sniffer to check for leaks with that too. All right, now we're gonna check subcooling and superheat. Uh, I put my ports on, the high side and low side. Also put my temperature gauges on the suction and the liquid line. Gonna record my, my readings on my check sheet. Also, while we're doing this, we're going to look around, see if we see any oil, 
see any signs of any leaks. I do see a pressure switch right here that's pretty wet with oil. And uh, we'll go ahead and check that with the leak detector. Also, you want to look for any excessive rust on the coils, Come, the, the uh, pipes coming in and out of the coil. It's another spot that's a pretty common spot for a leak. All right, next we're going to check the capacitor. First, remove the disconnect. Remove the, this one is a dual capacitor. It does a fan and compressor, so remove all the terminals. This one's supposed to be a 45.5. I found that labeled on the compressor and the fan motor. Set your meter to MFD. Check the first reading. 4.8. Other reading is 38.3. Now, on these will tell you plus or minus a percentage. Most of them are plus or minus 5%. Um, obviously, we'll do the math on that and see if this one passes. All right, next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna record the amp draw on the fan, the compressor. Also, I'm gonna check the capacitor, make sure there's no pitting. We're gonna grab the common wire to the compressor, take an amp reading, and also to the fan. Again, checking all the wiring, make sure nothing's chafed. Uh, there is vibration from the fan spinning, so any wires that are touched any copper will eventually wear a hole and ground out. Um, so we're going to go through all the connections on the system and make sure nothing's touching. Also, important, look inside the unit where the fan wires are, where the ground wires are, make sure they're all secure. Also, sometimes some of your pressure switches are down inside the unit, you'll have to remove the fan to check them also. All right, now we're going to clean the coil. We're going to spray from the inside out, that way we push all the debris out of the coil. You don't want to spray from the, in, from the outside in because then you're just pushing the debris further into the coil. Another thing that I do want to point out also while you're doing this, you want to look down inside the unit, make sure there's not excessive amount of leaves inside. Uh, when you reach down, grab them leaves, pull them out. Also, there's drains at the bottom of this unit. You want to make sure as you're spraying in here, the water's flowing out of the unit properly. Also, it's just as important to clean this coil as down here at the bottom row of where these, the coil ends at and sits. There's a bunch of, you can see that here there's mulch and leaves stuck in there. Uh, if you leave that stuff in there, it's just going to start to rot and it's going to hold moisture against that coil. So you usually just spray the bottom when you're all getting close to being done. As you can see, all I use is water to keep this clean. If you have a tune-up done every year, it's not, it doesn't require to use any harsh chemicals to try and clean this coil. Uh, if you don't get a tune-up done every year, we come back for a service call. Uh, there's a good chance we'll look at this coil and see it very dirty. At that point, we'll have to use a, an acid to clean it. Um, the, the reason I don't like using the acids is because actually there's a Teflon coating on these copper fins here. Uh, we use the acid wash, it actually removes the Teflon. The Teflon helps from the debris sticking to the coil. So again, getting a tune-up done every year, uh, all you need to do is just spray it with water versus have to use harsh chemicals. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the unit back together and check the performance. The next thing we're gonna do is check the unit for level. Check it from side to side, front to back. So it looks like we're pitched out this way a little bit. Uh, usually what I do is I'll cut a couple pieces of PVC, jack up the unit to level it up. I'll show that later. Uh, also too, now that everything's all wet from cleaning the coil, I'm going to go ahead and clean the outdoor unit. Hi, thanks for watching. If you'd like to schedule preventative maintenance on your air conditioning system, give us a call at 215-245-3200 or check us out on the web at ecicomfort.com.